Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be my 27 to 28 week pregnancy update. So I am officially in the third trimester, which is super exciting and kind of overwhelming. I feel like up until now I was like, I got plenty of time. And then now it's like, not really. I still, I mean, I'm only just starting my third trimester, but it means that, you know, the baby could come at any time but getting pretty close so pretty exciting for that uh, I'm also in actually filming in the baby's room today and I'm probably gonna film a lot of these videos in the baby's room from now because we're currently renovating and doing things around the house uh, and so this room is pretty much the only room that's actually set up nicely so and if you guys are wondering I will be filming a nursery tour but it will be posted after he is born just because I do not want to give away his name just yet we want to keep that private as it is right there on the wall so it would be quite a dead giveaway if you were able to see the whole room so I'm sitting in his little rocking chair at the moment I've got my lamp here I've got my chest of drawers here and so this is going to be our little filming space for now and I hope you guys like it so I have a whole piece of paper full of things to talk about and I don't want to be here for forever so I figured we should probably get started uh, the first symptom I've written down is swelling. So I haven't actually experienced pretty much any swelling with my pregnancy. I think because most of it has been in winter uh, and in like spring. So I haven't really had too much swelling. But as the weather is starting to warm up here, which I'm so incredibly grateful for, unfortunately it comes with warm weather, comes with swelling and I have started to swell, particularly in my fingers and my ankles. So I am wearing just a cheap wedding band at the moment because my wedding rings they fit but they do get stuck and I have this horrible fear of them getting stuck on my fingers and having to cut them off so I'm pretty terrified about that so I have just been wearing this cheap band here because it is important to me to still wear some sort of momentum of my marriage on my fingers another one of my symptoms has been back aches that has been really uncomfortable um especially at my lower back and I have been using heat packs because that was what was recommended to me to use and I find that they are a godsend using a heat pack is amazing when you just have so much pain in your back and I know that it's because I'm getting quite heavy and I'm also not sleeping in the best positions because it's really difficult to sleep with this giant bump in front of you so I have been using heat packs for the back aches and I have been really helping um, I can't complain too much it's not sciatic pain it's just an ache pain so I can't really complain too much. Uh, my next thing has been, I think I mentioned this in my previous pregnancy vlog. If you haven't seen that, I'll leave that linked in the cards on the top of the screen for you. But I have been feeling so super emotional and I feel so incredibly bad for my husband. Because I am just super snappy and I'm really cranky and I'm really emotional and I cry over tons of things. Which are really irrelevant and when I'm doing it, when I'm being cranky and emotional, I know that I'm being ridiculous. Like I can tell that I'm being ridiculous. But I can't stop myself, like I just, I can't physically stop myself being ridiculous and not doing it. So I do eventually apologise later, but I just, that has been a symptom that is just progressing and I'm pretty sure that is hormones. Um, if you guys, if any, any of you have experienced that in your pregnancies, please let me know in the comments down below because I don't want to be the only one that's the crankiest person alive at 28 weeks. Going along with those, just feeling heavy and feeling, um, Having difficulty sleeping, those are obviously probably not helping to my level of crankiness. I wake up multiple times in the night at the moment and I get very hot and I want to go to the bathroom and I'm just, I can't find comfortable positions. So unfortunately that's just the way the cookie crumples at the moment. Another thing I've really been struggling with which sort of carries on from that is feeling so heavy. So I'm feeling very heavy front wise. Um, but also all rounder. I'm one of those people that when I put on weight, I put on weight everywhere. And so even though I am putting on a healthy amount of weight for the baby, my midwife is very happy with the amount of weight that I am putting on. Um, I can see it everywhere. It's not just in my stomach. So that makes me feel really bad. And as somebody who has struggled with body image, I find that I really am struggling with that and finding clothes that fit and things that make me feel good and so that is something that I'm really struggling with the past two weeks and I'm sure I will continue to struggle with because as a girl we're just taught you know thin is always better and so when you're getting pregnant and you're supposed to be putting on weight it's it's really uh, foreign to your brain so that's something I'm really struggling with um, let me know if any of you guys sort of had the same 
thing when you've had to put on weight for your pregnancies, if you guys have struggled with that as well. I try not to obsess about it, but it does absolutely upset me. Moving on to some more sort of TMI type um, symptoms, I have been getting a lot of watery discharge, uh, which I know you get a lot of discharge your whole pregnancy, that's not unusual for me, but I pretty much have this constant feeling of being damp, um, which is the best way I describe it to my midwife, which is 100% normal getting into this sort of period in your pregnancy, you just get more and more of that. But it did freak me out at first because I was like, oh my god, if I wet myself, am I leaking? Is something wrong? But no, it is normal. It is just your body preparing for birth. But it is a bit of a shock the first time you notice that. Or when you're sitting down, you're like, I feel a bit wet. So TMI, but definitely a symptom I want to talk about. Another big thing that happened the past fortnight was I did my glucose test. So we call it the GTT test here. In Australia, I'm not sure if you guys call it something different overseas, and ours is a two hour long test. So you drink this 300ml uh, bottle of icky yucky liquid, which I really struggled with because you have to fast for eight hours before you can take this liquid. And if you guys aren't following me, you would know that I have horrible morning sickness and that was a struggle for me. I had to take medication to make sure I wasn't throwing up. And then where I went, they gave me the liquid and it was warm and it tasted sort of like off Sprite. If you guys have had Sprite or lemonade, um, it was horrid. And so it took me about 10 minutes to drink the bottle. It's supposed to be done in 5 minutes. I couldn't do it in 5 minutes. I did it in about 10 minutes. And then thankfully they let me lay down for the 2 hours. And so you get your blood tested before you drink the drink, an hour and then 2 hours. Um, my partner did come with me for that um, as a bit of moral support and also because I wasn't sure how I would be feeling post this test. Uh, but I did manage to keep it down and get my blood taken and then quickly go and get something to eat. But unfortunately I did crash afterwards um, and that was horrible. That was getting the shakes, feeling really sweaty and hot and gross and it was really a horrible feeling. I know a lot of people don't have that sort of reaction and I've actually read a lot of people who did have the similar reaction because your body's, there's so much sugar in this drink and you have to process it so quickly and it's just, it's disgusting. But I did get my results back from that and they are all fine. I do not have gestational diabetes, which is really exciting um, because that's just the whole complication I didn't want to deal with. And I was nervous about it because having constant nausea can be a symptom of gestational diabetes. But I don't, and I have uh, fairly low blood pressure, so I don't have any symptoms of preeclampsia, which is great as well. And also, with my midwife telling, test, testing that, all my blood results came back fine, as well as my bump is measuring perfectly, as well as little Bubba's heartbeat. So that was super exciting to get that all that back yesterday at my 28-week appointment, and I have now moved to two to three weekly appointments now. So I will see my midwife every two to three weeks until pretty much I think the last month and then I might see her every week but from now forward I'm pretty much seeing her every two to three weeks which seems like a lot but also really good because now is when the things that you know preterm labor and the baby not moving and things happening can happen and so it's good to be seeing her a little bit more regularly because it does make me really nervous that something could go wrong and I wouldn't know about it. Um, she also did mention to me that now is the point where I have to be taking a lot of notice of baby's movements and to be honest, it's hard not to notice them. They're really big movements now. Um, there's no little jabs and kicks anymore. It's like a big roll. It feels like a tennis ball or maybe like a football rolling in your stomach or like rolling across your stomach. And I can physically see it happening from the outside. And it just, it's th this rolling feeling. Every now and then I'll get a jab, but most of the time it's sort of rolling movements. So they're kind of hard to miss. And they're pretty much regular throughout the day. He does obviously have nap periods where he is sleeping and I don't feel him at all. But um, I can poke him now from the outside. Like I can physically poke my stomach and he will respond to that. So, and he responds to loud noises now. So if my dogs bark, he, he will sort of jump a little bit. Um, so it's really funny. And I'm also feeling hiccups, which is kind of a weird feeling. It just You just see your stomach do this in sort of regular intervals. And it's quite, it's really funny to watch and kind of experience. So if you guys have been pregnant and felt that, you guys will understand what I'm saying. It literally feels like something on the inside just pressing against your skin a lot. Um, it's very alien and kind of cool. 
We also finished our second birth class. Um, I'm pretty sure I spoke about our first birth class in my last pregnancy update, uh, but we did finish our second one, and this one was very focused on pain relief in pregnancy, so, or in labour. And I want your guys' opinion on pain relief. At the moment, I am not 100% need an epidural, but I'm also not don't want one at all. I'm very much, uh, I want to see how I deal with the pain and how I manage and what I need. Um, I'm not too frightened of the pain. I mean, I have a pretty high pain tolerance. Um, I've had my appendix out, I've had endometriosis surgery, and I recovered really well from those. Like, And those are things that a lot of people find incredibly painful, and I, you know, they were painful, but I survived. I wasn't dying. Um, I could feel them, but it was just more uncomfortable for me, to be honest. And so I have a pretty high pain threshold. Um, and so I'm not too, you know, nervous about the pain. I know it's good pain. I know you have to have it to get the baby out. But I do want your opinion on epidurals or gasinate or morphine or pethidone, pethidone, pethidine um, during labour and what your guys' experiences were with those things because I've had some amazing experiences and I've also had some complete disasters. So I sort of want to feel, I want to hear your guys' opinion on what you had during your labours or um, what your family members have had. It'd be really interesting to find out. Another thing is, now that I'm in my third trimester, I am thinking about getting my hospital bag packed. I have started packing the baby's hospital bag, or slash nappy bag, because I have a lot of the stuff already, so I can sort of put it in the bag. And I'm more than happy to do a what's in my baby's hospital bag for you guys, whenever you guys want that. Um, I haven't even started mine and my husband's yet. Um, I'm very overwhelmed with what I feel like I need to pack, because here in Australia, we can have very short stays in the hospital, you can stay as short as six hours before they send you home, which seems like really rushed, but obviously they're not going to send you home if you're not ready, and I actually have to stay a little bit longer because I have to start on injections post-birth, um, just because of a blood clotting disorder that I have, but I don't want to overpack. So if you guys have any suggestions for hospital bag videos or what to pack in my hospital bag or things that you think are absolutely crucial and necessary to pack, please leave them in the comments below as well. I'm asking you guys for a lot in the comments today, but I really want a bit of a discussion on what you guys really think about this stuff, especially if you guys are experienced mummies. I'm a first time mum, so this is all new to me and I don't really want to be not sure what to bring. That is pretty much it for my actual updates for this week. I mean, baby is getting pretty big. He's over a kilo now. Um, I will be getting a scan in a couple weeks. I am getting my whooping cough needle this week, um, so that will be on Wednesday. Um, so I will be getting a sort of measurement scan at 32 weeks, so in a couple weeks just after Christmas. And my baby shower is being planned. That will be in January. I'll try and get some clips of that if I possibly can for you guys. Uh, and I will do a baby shower haul if you guys are interested in that. I am going to do a baby boy haul. I'm going to film that after I film this video. So that will be up on my channel in the next week or so. And yeah, if you guys have any more video requests, please leave them down below. I am really enjoying filming these pregnancy updates for you guys to follow along with me. And I'm going to try and do this weekly because that seems to be what's preferred. Obviously, there's nothing to update you guys on. I can't, but most of the time there's something new. So I will try and do that for you guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed our new little nursery setup. I will insert some pictures of my bump for you guys. Um, I took some pictures this week, so I can insert those for you guys. It is getting pretty big, I think. Um, I've really popped, especially from the side view. Not so much from the front, but from the side view, I'm really starting to look quite popped, um, which is kind of exciting. I've been saying that for weeks, but now I'm like, wha-bam, baby. So, it's kind of hard not to tell I'm pregnant now, so. Anyway, I'm going to stop blabbering. Please subscribe if you guys enjoyed this video. So give it a thumbs up if you like pregnancy updates and leave me the comments down below. Um, also, just leave me some comments if you'd like. I would love to hear how you guys are going. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!